because I listened to it on audiobook. I do not have a physical copy, but you can buy physical copies from Tattered Cover. I know for sure we have some in stock, so you can order them online at tatteredcover.com. Um, hi, everybody. Hello. We're so excited. It's going to be awesome. If you are here for the Megan Kate Nelson live stream event, you're in the right place. If not, stick around. It's still going to be a ton of fun. We're going to talk about the Civil War in a really interesting fashion, I promise. It's not going to be like, you know, a high school lecture. It's going to be really cool. Um, let's see here. Oh, I got it. Okay, cool. Yes. So we're just going to let everybody gather for a little while and then we'll get started very soon. Hi everyone, keep gathering. Yes, hearing me repeat this intro, it's fine. <laughs> We're just letting some people join, um, you know, adjust to time zones, all that jazz. Hope everybody's good. We're going to be, oh, we are going to be talking about Megan Kate Nelson's new book, The Three Cornered War, uh, which is the Union, the Confederacy, and Native peoples in the fight for the West. And so it's a really interesting take on the Civil War and what was going on in New Mexico, Colorado, Utah, Arizona around that time, rather than just, you know, all of the battles you heard about in the East and everything you probably didn't study in high school. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. The comments have flown by, so I don't know who asked that question, but there's your answer. So we're going to get started in just a minute here. Um, we're going to do our intro, and then we'll invite Megan to come join us. Hope everybody's doing okay. I don't look like a ghost this time. Um, Afton did hers outside all pretty like, but my, my space doesn't allow for that. So um, you're welcome. Se seal? S uh, I'm so sorry. Munson is the last name on who asked that question. Hello. Um, and so, yeah, Afton did hers outside yesterday with Pam. That was, and she had such a pretty background, but I don't have that today. So, well, we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you guys so much for joining us. My name is McKaylee. I'm the director of marketing and events at Tattered Cover Bookstore. We're really excited to have you guys on here today. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, Megan Kate Nelson's The Three Cornered War. And I just want to give a quick introduction before we invite Megan to come on here and join us. But um, quick updates about Tattered Cover. We first off want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your orders, for your constant support, for playing our games on Instagram. Thank you for continuing to keep Tattered Cover at the forefront of your minds. We really appreciate it. Um, right now, we are still open for online business, and um, we right now our website is open for ordering Tuesdays 10 a.m. Mountain Time to Saturdays at 5 p.m. Mountain Time, which that small, like, two-and-a-half-day window gives us time to refill the orders um, as best we can. And we appreciate your guys' patience and understanding as we get that out to everybody, um, especially because, you know, we're shifting from being a brick-and-mortar bookstore to an online-only business. And that's a huge transition that we're making um, while still keeping ourselves st safe, our staff safe, and the materials that we're sending to you safe as well. Um, so the phone lines are shut down, so the best way um, is to email us. Um, depending on what your question is. And also curbside pickup is shut down, but we're doing delivery for all of these orders as well. Um, the other thing that we're doing is we're doing these live streams, uh, which is just thank goodness we live in a world where technology is so advanced. And we're doing this with, Afton says it's so much better than me, <laughs> but it, we believe that art is a survival resource. And we believe that it's vitally important, especially in times of crisis like this. We believe it's important every day, all the time. We're a bookstore that sh shares stories. And we are here doing these live streams to affirm that creative work is essential and we want to elevate it and we want it to be our top priority that we have these stories available to you and these authors giving them a platform um, so that they can share their work with you. And 
something about this that I'm really excited about is that we're able to branch out to all these different genres. You know, this is actually our first nonfiction event that we're hosting, which is really cool. So we're servicing everyone in the community that we possibly can, whether, you know, it's stories of the past, stories set in space, you know, stories with elves, or, you know, the picture book that you read your kid. It's important. And we just want to continue saying that we're grateful for these authors, we're grateful for their stories, and this is the way that we can show that. And thank you for being a part of that. Um, and so we firmly believe that we need books and stories right now, so that's what we're doing. Um, then after this uh, this um, ev event is over, we're gonna have the video available on our live stream on Instagram for 24 hours, and then it will be up on our YouTube channel, which will share our uh, the links throughout our social media so that you can watch that afterwards, and it will also have closed captioning for those of you who might need it. Also, we're doing more author events and different events. We have a live concert happening tomorrow at 1.30 Mountain Time, which may seem weird, but the reasoning is is that the concert is the Bookshop Band, and they're from the UK, and they are holding this amazing book recommendation concert thing, and it's so cool. So it's going to be 1.30 Mountain Time. Do the math if you're in a different time zone, sorry. And <laughs> so... Um, it's going to be lots of fun. Join us for that tomorrow on Friday, April 10th at 1.30 Mountain Time. And then on Monday, you will see me again here on Instagram Live with uh, Mary Pauline Lowry, who if you are a fan of women's fiction, uh, humorous fiction, Bridget Jones, her new book is The Roxy Letters. And we're going to be discussing that. But today, the book that we're going to be talking about now um, is, like I mentioned before, The Three-Cornered War by Megan Kate Nelson. And a little bit about her, I have to say I love her bio. It's so just personable and amazing. Um, she's a writer, historian, road cyclist, and cocktail enthusiast uh, with 34,000 images on her phone, most of them of her cats. I completely can appreciate that and understand that. Um, but she's also, she's an expert in the history of the American Civil War, the West, um, and the 19th century more generally. She's written many, many articles about this. Um, her new book, like I said before, is The Three-Cornered War, The Union, the Confederacy, and the Native People in the Fight for the West. Um, she lives in Lincoln, Massachusetts, but she grew up um, in the West in Colorado and uh, talks about her vacations that she used to take with her family, which is really great. Um, I love, we're road trippers too in my life. So I am also excited because she's, she really knows what she's talking about. She's got a BA in history and literature from Harvard University and her PhD in American studies from the University of Iowa. So I can formally introduce Dr. Megan Kate Nelson, who I'm going to try and join right now. We'll see if this works. This person, add. We're waiting to see if she'll come and join us. <gasps> there she Hello. is! Oh, see, now I have to adjust the books again. I know. I, I can never get this right. Okay. Yeah, mine's on a laptop, so I'm like moving the screen so I can be sort of centered. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally crazy, all of this stuff. Well, thank you so much for having me. We're so excited to have you. Like I said before, this is our first nonfiction live stream, which is really exciting because it just appeals to readers and storytellers of all kinds. So I'm very excited to have this and thank you so much for taking the time. Of course. <laughs> of course, yes. I mean, I've, I've been, as I've been promoing this, I've been talking about how much I love the Tattered Cover is my childhood bookstore. I used to go there all the time with my parents and my brother when it was Yay! in the original Cherry Creek location. Yes. Yeah, and I would, it was always a reward for good behavior uh, yeah. that we would get to go to the tattered cover and pick out books. And so I was super well behaved as a child, super well behaved. Oh, I, I, I love meeting authors who I call like tattered cover kids. Like yeah. the fact that we grew up in tattered cover and just sharing different stories, you know, and uh, the memories that are there, you know, because tattered cover turns 50 years old next year. Oh and my God. I know, isn't that bonkers? Unbelievable. It's really, really cool. Um, and we were actually supposed to open up our fifth location in Westminster, but then Corona happened, so we don't know. But the but the point is, is that it has such a legacy legacy that's still growing. So I love that yes. you love Tattered Cover, and um, we could go on about that all day. But I know, we could. you want to talk about your book. Yay, yes. <laughs> 
Here's it in hardcover. Yes, thank you. I listened to the audiobook on Libro.fm. <laughs> and by the way, I don't know if you had any say in helping pick your narrator, but she was excellent. So excellent. I'm so glad. I, I've listened to excerpts, but I haven't listened to the whole thing. So I'm really glad to hear that. Yeah, she's Cynthia Farrell is amazing. She's she was so great and did such a good job. Kept me in kept me um engrossed the whole time. You know, it good. didn't feel like she was just talking at me like a lecturer. And a lot of that has to do with your writing too. So it was really oh, good. good. <laughs> um, <laughs> but let's, let's, let's give the people a little bit of a summary. Like what is this sure. book about? The subtitle and the title kind of give it away, but I want to hear it in your words of what is this book about? And then I would love to hear, how did you get this idea? Like what made you want to write about this specifically? Sure. Yeah. So the three cornered war tells the story of the civil war in the desert Southwest. Um, most of the action takes place in New Mexico and what would become Arizona. Uh, Arizona did not exist at the beginning of the war in 1861, which is an exciting tale uh, readers of the book will learn about. Um, some California action, some Texas action, and then some Colorado action, which yes. is uh, super fun to, to research and write about. Um, and this is a theater of the war that no one ever talks about. Um, no. it's, yeah, not even in the in the West, even in New Mexico, where the majority of the kind of real intense action happened in both parts of this war. Um, even then, people in there, people just don't ever hear about it. It's not something that you ever really learn about. We're so um, kind of engrossed in and dominated by the stories of the war in the Eastern Theater of Gettysburg and Virginia and um, Shiloh and Appomattox. That, that there's really no attention paid to this theater of the war, which was actually hugely important, that, the, that Americans did in fact care not only about the North and the South, but also the West. Um, so it, it, the story takes place between the summer of 1861 and the summer of 1868, which is a longer time frame than people are used to thinking about. Um, and one of the things that happens when you expand the geography of the Civil War is that you expand the chronology. So it kind of messes with, I think, in a good way, yeah. <laughs> all of the, the preconceptions of what the American Civil War was, what people were fighting for, um, and it really adds a lot of interesting stories um, to the, the overall story of the Civil War that people haven't really heard of before. And I came to this because I was researching my previous book, which is also a Civil War book about destruction yeah. and the war, and I read about these battles that took place in New Mexico that involved Colorado soldiers. And having grown up in Colorado, um, as you noted in my intro, I was just sort of amazed because I had never heard about any of these battles and I had no idea what was going on. And as a historian, I sort of love those moments because I want to know what happened. Uh, and yeah. I also want to know why I did not know. Like what, what was happening that kind of erased the story of this three cornered war in the West between the Union and the Confederacy and then multiple indigenous communities. And so that leads me into one question that I had about like, it, it's true that we haven't heard a lot about this. I mean, granted, I had a very unconventional American education and didn't learn about the Civil War until I was like a junior in high school. Like, mm -hmm. But so for me, when I was reading this book, it was very fascinating and you did a great job of like bringing it back to battles and things that we did know about in the east yeah um, but i'm curious about where you did your research and where mm -hmm. did you get these materials especially if it's a topic that isn't talked about widely or isn't taught widely yeah so that that is one of the most exciting things about being a historian is yes. that we we really nerd out on the research aspect like we really I love going to archives. I love looking at um, at actual materials. And you know, right now, it's this is one of the biggest bummers about what's happening right now for me is that I'm not. I had to leave a research trip midway. Oh. Um, yeah, for the next book project, and and that was really disappointing because, you know, like all historians, I like to be with the documents. I like to see them. I like to look at them. And one of the first uh, research kind of forays that I made was actually in Denver, the Denver Public Library. Yes, uh, DPL. Yes, uh, the Western Historical Collection, which is sort of up there 
in its so own cool. space and sort of this inner sanctum of like quiet and amazingness. And um, I, I hadn't realized actually until I went back to look at the document that I, I first looked at the diary of Alonzo Ickes, who is um, one of the main protagonists in the book in 2010. Oh. So 10 years ago, which I was shocked by um, because I really didn't, I went on the first major research trip for the book in 2014. Mm -hmm. um, I drove out from Boston where I am currently, um, drove out in my sedan, like visited my parents and my family, some of whom are here joining us tonight. Hello. <laughs> um, and went to DPL, went to History Colorado, to the Stephen Hart Library there, um, and then drove from Colorado, basically went to all of the sites that I could in the book, including Fort Garland, which plays a major role in Icus's kind of early moments in the war. Yeah. Um, Fort <laughs> Union, yeah. Then it drove through New Mexico and Arizona, and in, then into West Texas, and basically went to every state archive and university special collections that I could to look at whatever documents they had, whether they were diaries or letters or military reports or, or photographs. Um, and then most importantly, I went to all of the sites. And yeah. one of the things um, that readers will find when they open Three Corner Door is that there is a lot of landscape description because the nature of the high desert is hugely important. It's like its own character in yes. the story. The way yes. that you frame it is it, it's like this whole other um, aspect. And I have a couple questions about the setting too, but please continue. It, it really is. It's so visceral um, the way that you have it described. Yes. Well, and so all of you who live in Colorado know, and any of you who have, have ever lived there or visited there, you know that when you first kind of come and you're walking around, you're really affected by the aridity, uh, by the elevation, yep. you don't breathe, you don't really, you are very thirsty, you're very quickly dehydrated. Yep. Uh, and it has all of these effects on the human body. And that interested me because I, I really am interested in what bodies at war are kind of like mm -hmm. and how that shapes battle actions um, because of course these are people who are fighting these battles yeah and so it matters if they are tired and hungry or exhausted um, because of because of where they are um, and it's always important to look at uh, the actual places where these events happen and I'll just give you one quick example that that readers will encounter in the first chapter um, in the summer of 1861 this kind of small group of, of confederate texans under this very ambitious and so slightly are. unhinged um, guy named uh, Texan, named John Baylor. Uh, they rode into New Mexico and they took the town of Mesilla, which is south of Las Cruces, if anyone's been there, um, and occupied it for the Confederacy. And then they chased a, a group of about four or 500 uh, Union soldiers and their families as they were trying to retreat. Uh, up over the Oregon Mountains, um, where they were kind of trying to find this other road to go to another fort. And I didn't realize, um, there's, there's a whole section in there where there's all these descriptions of the Union troops slowing down as they were mm -hmm. approaching the mountains. And at first I thought, oh, it's because the sun is going up, it's July, it's super hot. Um, and, you know, the, the soldiers had also consumed a fair amount of whiskey on their way out the door. <laughs> oh, uh, so 